स्थापकाय च धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिने अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम आई बाव जाऊ जो श्री रामकृष्ण हु केम टू एस्टैब्लिश दिटर्नल रिलीजन यूनिवर्सल रिलीजन हु वॉज द एम्बॉजमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स एंड हु वॉज द फॉरमोस्ट अमॉन्ग ऑल ऑफ अवतार्स आई बाव जाऊ जो ही मे गेन एंड गेन ओम शांति 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 ही पीस पीस Peace be unto all. I have been asked to speak about Swami Advaitananda, Lachu Maharaj, by Swami Udharananda, head of the Ramakrishna Vedanta Society, Manila, Philippines. his birthday is on the 16th of february of this month <coughs> actually we do not know when he was born but we just put a date so that we can observe his birthday shami adbhutanandas life is very interesting inspiring intriguing he was a real mystic a real mystic is always communed with god and god consciousness i was very fascinated when i read his shat katha when i was in school in college such simplicity natural openness such renunciation such purity are remarkable Sri Ramakrishna wanted to demonstrate to this modern world, without education, after completely no education, a person can be a Nara Brahman. Sri Ramakrishna demonstrated that through Lakshmi Maharaj. So we began the major remark that he was. Sri Ramakrishna's greatest miracle. When we read Lakshmi Maharaj's life and teachings and reminiscences, we get inspiration. They touch our hearts. I remember when I was in Hollywood, Swami Prabhupada Nanda Ji asked me. you know each direct disciples should have a biography and that biography should not be more than 200 pages and that biography should have three things first his life second his teachings and third reminiscences so when i left hollywood i was of course working on that book shami adbhutanand how a shepherd boy became a saint that was the model i started to work on the disciples of sri ramakrishna anyhow he was born in chapra district in bihar his parents died when he was very young he was raised by his uncle when he was in early teens 11 12 years old he and his uncle came to calcutta they knew one of their neighbors 
was working in Calcutta Medical College. He came to Calcutta for a job. So, this friend of his uncle knew Ramchandra Dattu, who was a householder disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. So, find this teenage boy. Ramdatta hired him as a servant. He used to look after Ram's children. He used to go for shopping, buying groceries, cleaning. This kind of servant's job he got in Ramdatta's service in Calcutta. It was in 1879. Ramdatta first came in contact with Sri Ramakrishna. One day they were talking, so Latu, we shall call him Latu, Latu Maharaj. Latu got in, in curious. Will you, Sir, will you take me to Sri Ramakrishna? So Ramchandra fulfilled his request and went to Dakshineshwar. Seeing him, Sri Ramakrishna says, Ram, where did you get this angel? He is not an ordinary boy. You see, Ram, there are some spring is covered by a big piece of rock. When you remove the rock, the water gushes out. So this boy is a spring of spirituality, which is covered by a stone. Latu returned to Calcutta, but his mind was with Sri Ramakrishna and Dakshineshwar. Latu, Ramdatta quite often used to send some sweets, some fruits for the master. Raju said, sir, let me carry for you. So he used to carry those things to Sri Ramakrishna. And sometimes he wanted to stay in, in Dakshineshwar. Sri Ramakrishna said, my goodness, you are taking money and you have a job and you are serving me, you are supposed to serve Ram. No, sir, I want to serve you. Some people say that perhaps he was an incarnation of one one. Tremendous service attitude. I want to serve you. I want to love you, I want to serve you. Eventually it became impossible for him to stay in Calcutta. Sri Ramakrishna sent him back again and again. Then one day he told Ramdatta's wife, Mother, I shall give up this job in your house. I shall stay with the master. Then Ramdatta's wife said, Who will feed you? Who will clothe you? Well, I shall eat food from the temple, temple prasad, but who will give you cloth? Then the Ram Babu will give me cloth. You will not work here and how will Rambabu give you cloth? Why not? He loves me. Finding his guilelessness, simplicity, Krishna Priyoshi, Ramdatta's wife, was moved. So innocent. So Sri Ramakrishna asked Ram, Ram, what to do? Sir, you ruined his life. You took <laughs> money, you took him away from me. What can I do? Let him stay with you. So Latu Maharaj stayed with Sri Ramakrishna, serving him. And Sri Ramakrishna was training him. Hey, come, let me give you some lessons. Learn the alphabet. Oh, oh, ah, he was learning teaching alphabet, Bengali alphabet. Ka, 
क क क इन हिंदी क बिकम्स क इज लैंग्वेज इज मदर टंग इज हिंदी सी राम कृष्ण से माय गुडनेस हाउ कैन आई टीच यू या नो एजुकेशन फॉर यू सी राम कृष्ण डिज नॉट गो टू स्कूल ही इज गिविंग ही इज एजुकेटिंग इज डिसाइपल नो एजुकेशन फॉर यू वन जे लाटू वॉज टायर्ड फैनिंग सी राम कृष्ण ए लेटो डू यू नो वेदर गॉड स्लीप्स आर नॉट आई डू नॉट नो सर गॉड नेवर स्लीप्स इफ गॉड स्लीप्स the whole creation will be dissolved he is wise and he can he is protecting his children all the time that was marvel he was tired one evening and fell asleep sri ramakrishna school the gym i don't need your service you go you have come have you come here to sleep Sir, forgive me. I shall not sleep. Two years, that you must have fought and conquered sleep at night. Who is a read that story? And the Michael says, "What is called Guru Bhakti? Devotion for the Guru. Whole life he never slept at night." He died in 1920, and came in 1980 to 20, and in 20 to 40 years, no sleep at night. Amazing person. These people would see sometimes he will cover his whole body with a cloth, chadar. People knew that he is not sleeping. Day time you will sleep a little. Amazing that story you know, penetrated inside me. The true willpower of one, what one can do in his life. Latu, barefoot, a devotee gave him a pair of sandals. And Sri Ramakrishna, that sandal he used to keep outside the veranda, and Dukshinishar had some jackals and some wild animals are there in the jungle. One day, early in the morning, Sri Ramakrishna was in the garden, in the flower garden, and Latu made a resolution that without seeing Sri Ramakrishna's face, he will not see anybody's face. He used to sleep in the veranda, so he came to see Ramakrishna's room. Did not find him, so he put both of his eyes on his eyes, and he was shouting, "Apu ne kuthai gelen, master, why are you? Why are you?" The Thakur shouted from the garden, which is outside the on the bank of the Ganges, west side of Sir Ramakrishna's room. I am here. Sir, what are you doing? Well, the Jabuti gave you a pair of shoes. I saw only one, one, one piece of shoe is there. Another piece is is gone. I was thinking, but a jackal took away. So I am searching your sho- shoes in the garden. <laughs> Guru is searching disciple's shoes in the garden, sir. <laughs> Please don't do that. It would be very, very inauspicious, inauspicious for me. It is bad for me. Please come back, come back. <laughs> When I used to read that story, I was so moved. I cannot tell you. What is called love? How Sri Ramakrishna captured his disciples. 
to love. <laughs> Sometimes Sri Ramakrishna used to make some fun with his disciples. He asked Rakhal, Brahmananda, Rakhal, prepare some visual role for me. Sir, I cannot do it. Lachmana said, my goodness, Master is asking, requesting, and you are denying. What is the matter with you? If you wish, you do it. I shall not do it. Rakhal said. So both was verbal exchange was going on. And Sri Ramakrishna was smiling. Then Sri Ramakrishna was telling. In, in the meantime, Ramlal, Sri Ramakrishna's nephew, arrived. Thakur was telling Ramlal, could you see this <laughs> Rakhal and Lecho, they are fighting. Among them, who is who has more devotion? Ramla says, Rakhal has more devotion. Latu became upset. He is denying, he is not serving the master and he has more devotion than me. I always obey the master. Then Thakur said, Yes, he has more devotion because he denied me. <laughs> His love is so intense <laughs> that he denied me. <laughs> and I saw you become angry. That is the reason you are defeated. <laughs> Rakhajina become angry. <laughs> I've seen how used to play with, the, with his disciples. <laughs> Sir, I shall never be angry in my life. You know how these disciples obeyed their teacher. Sri Ramakrishna, I sometimes say Dokshineshwar is a lab, a spiritual lab, where Sri Ramakrishna should train his disciples. Night time, he used to give very little food. Go, you meditate in Shiva temple, you meditate in Krishna temple, you meditate in Kali temple, you meditate in Panchavoji. He used to send his disciples. Then 2.30, 3 o'clock, they used to come back and sleep. Some would sleep on Sri Ramakrishna's floor, some on the veranda. One day, Latu was meditating on the bank of the river. It was daytime. And high tide came, his half of his body under water, but no consciousness. Then Swami Adhvaitananda, Gopalda came, gave the news, Master ran. He pulled his disciple from water and brought back. We have never heard such type of deep meditation. One day, Latu Maharaj was meditating in the Shiva temple. And it was last time, Latu did not come. Master is inquiring about him. <clears throat> Someone says that he is in Shiva temple. So Sri Ramakrishna went there, saw that Latu was perspiring. He came, he brought a palm leaf fan from his room and asked Ramlal to bring a glass of water. So he was fanning his disciple, Latu. The Latu slowly came back to his consciousness and asked, Master, why are you fanning? Hey boy, you are tired. You should drink this glass of water. It is lunch time, you did not eat. Come, come. Sri Ramakrishna said that his Kundalini awakened. He was out of this world, he was in Samadhi. One day, devotee came from Calcutta and Latu Maharaj, he was 
questioning Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Lato Maharaj told a harsh words to him. So he left. Sri Ramakrishna heard the whole thing. Then when the devotee left, Sri Ramakrishna said, People come to me for a little peace or joy. And you use harsh words. So he left. You did not do right. You go to Calcutta and apologize. Guru's order. Next day he went to Calcutta and he apologized to the thousands of devotees. He said, why you have come five, six miles from Dukshinishra? Why you have come? The master sent me. Sorry, I hurt you. Please forgive me. So he came back. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, did he forgive you? He said, yes, sir. But did you give my salutation to him? He said, no. Go back again. Again, six months, come back. And he went, Master sent his salutation to you. That devotee burst into tears. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, when he came back, now your all the misgiving, that bad karma is gone. How Sri Ramakrishna trained his disciples. You know, Swamiji had a desire that all disciples of Ramakrishna, what kind of spiritual instruction they got from their from Thakur should be recorded. But it was not done. How Sri Ramakrishna gave spiritual instruction to each disciple should be recorded. But it was not done. So anyhow, that is the reason I worked on those books. I think we have 12 or 11 or 12 books. Reminiscences of the disciples. Each disciple told reminiscences about Sri Ramakrishna. From there we got some information. So anyhow, Latu Maharaj got training. One day, Latu Maharaj was meditating in Panchavati. Thakur said, Hey Leto, on whom you are meditating, that person is making dough in Nahabad, working hard, go, get up. Sri Ramakrishna took Latu Maharaj to Holy Mother in Nahabad. He was the first disciple introduced to Holy Mother. Mother, he said to Mother, this boy is very pure and very simple, very guileless and very direct, straight. He will make dough for you and, and make chapati for you and the cleaning, dishwashing, shopping, whatever, this boy will do for you. Bas, that you got passport, access to Holy Mother. Only two disciples had access, Latu Maharaj and Buddha Gopal, senior Gopal. These two persons had free access to Holy Mother, none else. So, One day, Sri Ramakrishna told a story, Jyotila. It is in the Gospel of Ramakrishna, that he was a son of a poor widow. He went to his school to the teacher and teachers some ceremony and asked that every disciple should bring something to him. So he is so poor, he could not get anything. So he asked his mother. The mother says, in the forest, there is a Madhushudan, Dada. 
under the name of Krishna. So you call Madhusudan Dada, Madhusudan Dada will give something to you for your teacher. So he was crying in the forest, Oh Madhusudan Dada, Oh Madhusudan Dada, brother Madhusudan. So Krishna appeared. But I, am, I have nothing to give to my teacher. Please give me something. So he gave me, gave him a pot. So taking this pot, well, a pot of milk, give to your teacher. So he went to the teacher. Ha! He brought one pot of milk only. But sir, have this milk. So Guru emptied the pot. Again the pot was full. Emptied the pot. Again the pot was full. Lot of milk. Well, who had, did you get this part? Well, Madhusudan Dada. Madhusudan Dada, Krishna gave you? Well, yes. So he went to the point. Well, could you show me? Well, of course. Madhusudan Dada helps me every day when I go through the forest and come to the school. The teacher was moved. He went with Latu to, to the forest. And Latu was crying, Madhushan Dada, Madhushan Dada did not come. Then Latu was scar, that, that boy, Jotila, his name. Jotila was crying, crying. Madhushan Dada did not come. Then he said, this teacher will think that I am a liar, please. Then Madhushan Dada, from a distance, a voice came. You are pure, so I appeared before you. Your teacher is not pure, so I shall not appear. That's teacher that. That story in the gospel, that you wanted heard. But at three o'clock in the jungle of Dokshineshwar, he was crying, Oh Madhushudan Dada, Oh Madhushudan Dada. Brother Madhusudan. Aim. It was Aim recorded. Aim went and saw the young disciple of the Master crying for Madhusudan. You know how, how we sometimes complain we are not getting any spiritual experience. This kind of people get a spiritual experience. Faith. Faith in Guru. Amazing. And anyhow, Sri Ramakrishna became sick, cancer, moved to Calcutta. Latu always went there. Because he has no family, no bondage, nothing. Kashipur. From Shampukur to Kashipur. Latu is always there. So Sri Ramakrishna was lamenting. My health condition is such, I shall be not be able to go to the bathroom, toilet. They will have to bring some commode in my room. Who will clean it? Sir, I am a sweeper, sir. I shall clean the toilet. I am a All disciples laughed. That was just innocence, you know. Since, you know. How much love he had for his guru. Sri Ramakrishna passed away 16th August 1886. His body was cremated. In Kashipur cremation ground, Latu went there. If you read his reminiscences, what a vivid account he described. When the funeral pyre was burning, Shoshi Maharaj, Swami Ramakrishna Nandu was fanning the funeral pyre. Then he put 
all ashes in a copper rod carriage to Kashiku, put on Sri Ramakrishna's bed and continue to worship as Sri Ramakrishna was living. Then Holy Mother left for pilgrimage for one year. Natu went with Holy Mother. Then in Vrindavan he stayed a few months. Then he came to Calcutta, most probably January or February 1887. Then Swamiji said, Hey, Latu, we have all take monastic vows. You will have to take monastic vows. But before these monastic vows, Thakur gave him a wakar cloth and a rosary in Kashipur. As you remember, the 12 disciples got the rosaries, 11 monastic and one Girish. So this Latu Maharaj's this okar cloth which Thakur gave and the rosary, I found in Banaras. In 1977, when I was traveling, I took those pictures of that thing. I showed it in my book. This cloth and this rosary Sri Ramakrishna gave to Latu Maharaj. Amazing. So, Shami, Shami, he agreed, yes, I shall take monastic vows. Shamiji conducted the homo fire and gave him a name, Adhuta Ananda. Adhuta means sometimes wonder. <coughs> sometimes a strange word, sometimes has not a good connotation in English. Strange. Adhut. Miraculous. Phenomenal. That way we understand Advutananda. His everything is Advut. <laughs> <laughs> then in the Paranagar monastery, the disciples are you know, debating that hey, Thaku loved me. Others they say, Thakur loved me more than you. In this way, they have a fight. That who, who got maximum love for the master? The Latu Maharaj made a comment, my goodness. You boys, Latu Maharaj <laughs> actually older than most of them. And Latu Maharaj was the first disciple of Sri Ramakrishna who came to Thakur among the monastics. From 1979-80, sorry, 1879-80. So what happened, he said, brothers, let me tell you, the master did not leave any money or real estate or a property. If he would leave these things, you boys would fight for that. <laughs> and all burst into laughter. <laughs> but you will fight, my guru's property I shall get, I shall get. So you will you would have legal battle. <laughs> I'm glad Master did not leave any any worldly possessions. <laughs> Master did not leave any away any worldly possessions. <laughs> you know, him quite often he used to say, "Pita Rushajya Putre Pai." Hmm. The father's wealth is inherited by his children. So Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual wealth, the disciples inherited. That is a beautiful way to understand. So, so one day he saw Swami Sarodananda was reading books, philosophy and this and that, the scripture. <laughs> Latu Maharaj made a comment, Hey Sarod, have you come here to read? Is there any examination that you are going to appear? Brother, we all have to read. But Master did not read. You boys are reading books in the monastery. What is the matter with you? Thakur did not read any books. Brother, Sarat Bala said, his case is different. It is the divine mother supplied. The Divine Mother supplied all of his wisdom. (laughs) 
but but Sharad Maharaj replied, but you know, Master said, those who want to teach others, they will need some book knowledge and scriptural knowledge. Then Lati Maharaj said, well, you boys do whatever you want to. <laughs> he was telling how people understand spirituality. Lati Maharaj went for pilgrimage. Puri. Seldom even. He prayed two things from Jagannath. Lord, I have two prayers. Please fulfill. First prayer is, whatever I eat, let it be digested. Let it, there should not be any stomach problem. And second, may I not travel too much. May we stay in one place. Each of some disciples, their devotees asked, Maharaj, why did you pray those things to Lord Krishna, Lord Jagannath? Listen, I am a monk. I live on arms. <laughs> I go to the devotees' house, whatever they, whatever they give, I eat. But if I cannot digest that food, if I have a stomach problem, then I cannot concentrate. <laughs> so I prayed for the power of digestion. <laughs> And another prayer is, you know, you boys are traveling, this and that, it needs money. But I cannot, I do not ask money from anybody. So let me stay in one place. <laughs> so that I am not to beg money from the devotees that I want to go for pilgrimage. <laughs> so in Calcutta, sometimes he used to meditate on the bank of the Ganges. When there was a rain in the Calcutta, you have not seen that area. They call it that port railway, you know, railway wagon carries the goods and they put into the ship in the boat. So they, some empty wagon, <laughs> when there's a rain, he used to sleep there. And one day he found he has taken to Chitpur yard. <laughs> Then again, he, he came back to his place. Another day, he, he was meditating. With them. Some people brought called hay for the cows, the boat, anchored on the, on the Ganges Ghat. So he went on the top of the hay. <laughs> he was meditating. So the boatmen came and found. <laughs> they want to unload it. They found a holy man was meditating. <laughs> It was very strange. <laughs> and sometimes he used to go later, he used to meditate, he used to stay in Boshumati printing house. Upendranath Mukherjee, Sri Ramakrishna's disciple, who preached Sri Ramakrishna for money, and Sri Ramakrishna blessed him. He would be very rich. So we 166 Bobajari Street. I used to go there to buy books. <clears throat> He's very famous. He became very rich. A lot of publications. He has scripture, then daily newspaper, quarterly newspaper, uh, annual newspaper, uh, weekly newspaper. He has all kinds of publications. Boshumati. I met Upen Babu's wife, who met Sri Ramakrishna in 19... 70 in Banaras. At least I can say that I saw two persons who met Sri Ramakrishna. Ramendra Sundar Bhakti Tirtha and this Upen Babu's wife. These two persons met Sri Ramakrishna. So I met them. At least I can say. <coughs> so Upen Babu, time to time, used to give some money you know, to buy food and his, he used to stay there and meditate. Strange. Then when Swami Bibi Karnanda came in 1997 to Inji, 1897 uh, to 
India and they started Ramakrishna Mission. Lachu Maharaj opposed. Brother, why did you bring these activities? Master, it is not Sri Ramakrishna says, first he realized God, which is not necessary for this work and activities. Shamiji school the name right and left. You are a dumbbell. <laughs> you are stupid. You have no <laughs> so, <laughs> it is not for you, it is for the future generation. They will need some work. This and that they know. They always remember, I wrote a long article that two disciples opposed Swamiji, Yogananda and Advudananda, above against Ramakrishna Mission. And AIM did not did not approve. Otherwise, everybody approved. I wrote a long article on that. Anyhow, then Bhattu Maharaj later on was convinced what Swamiji said. Then Lachu Maharaj went for pilgrimage with Swamiji, going to Kashmir. What happened in Kashmir? In Kashmir, you, you can hire a boat. One side of that boat, um, that Muslim boatman and his family live, other side they rent. And they will, they will take you any place in the lake, you know, Dal Lake. And so, so see the women in the boat, <laughs> Latumara said, I am not going to stay here. Shamsi said, my goodness, I am going to stay. I shall, I will be here. Don't worry. So, Latumara said, stay. Then another day, what happened? Shamsi asked the young daughter of the boatman, give this beetle roll to that holy man. He saw that the young girl is bringing beetle roll. He jumped from the boat into the water. <laughs> and he does not know how to swim. <laughs> he jumped into the water. <laughs> the Swamiji, I could not understand that it would go so far. Swamiji rushed and they, with the help of the boatman, lifted him up from the water. <laughs> it is so hilarious. <laughs> Then he understood Swamiji was making some practical joke with him. <laughs> I, I, told, I shall tell you one story which I heard from Swami. I shall tell two stories right now by Swami Vijayananda. He was the in charge of Argentina Center. In 1968, he came to Advaita Ashrama and told this story, and I recorded it. It is in my book. Began on the, at that time, Swamiji, Lato Maharaj was in Banaras. Lato Maharaj did not just stay in the ashram. Because his routine is unpredictable. Sometimes may eat at 10 o'clock, sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning, sometimes no food. What he will do, nobody knows. But his attendants should always watch him. That when he's up, we shall have to feed him. He could not just stay in the ashram. Ashram has a routine. So what happened, one day Poshubhuti Maharaj, Vijayananda went and said, Maharaj, how are you? I'm all right. So, Vijayananda ji says, Maharaj, Latu Maharaj says, Vijayananda, Hey, Pushupati, the Vishwanath Darshan go te jash. Hello, Pushupati, do you go and visit Vishwanath, Lord Shiva? No, Maharaj, Vishwanath is all right with you. It is a piece of a stone. I do not go there. What? Vishwanath is a piece of a stone. Yes, Maharaj, to you is God, to me it is a piece of a stone. Hmm. Tui Gangasanam Kurish? Do you bathe in the Ganges, in Banaras? No, Maharaj, oh, Ganges water is muddy water, unclean. I, oh, to me, Haspata Lejjale Snan Koro. You bathe in hospital water. 
স্বামী রাম সুজি রাজকুমারের জিনিস লাই রামকৃষ্ণ মিশন হসপিটাল বলে ইউ ইউ বেদ ইন ক্লিন ওয়াচার অফ দি হসপিটাল ইয়াস মহারাজ নাতুমারাজ বিকেম ভেরি গ্রেভ ই জিন সে এনিথিং আপনার কাপলাপ দেশ স্বামী বিজয়ানন্দ স্বামী মুকুন্দানন্দ অ্যানাদার থ্রি দেয়ার ফ্রেন্ডস দে ওয়েন টু ব্যানারস গ্যাঞ্জেস ঘাট অ্যান্ড দে আর ওয়াচিং দি সানসেট অল অফ এ সাডেন হি স ইফ লাইক এ ফগ রাইজিং ফ্রম দি গ্যাঞ্জেস অ্যান্ড টুক দি ফর্ম অফ দি শিব অ্যান্ড দেন জিজেপি মেল্টেড ইন দি স্কাই he saw and then he was sh- shivering shivering then his friend grabbed him he did not say what happened then while returning to the ashram they said let us begin and say let us go and visit latu maharaj he came to latu maharaj he was lying down covering his body with a chadar cloth এ পশুপতি কি দেখিলি হ্যালো পশুপতি হোয়াট হ্যাভ ইউ সিন মহারাজ ইট ইজ ইউর গ্রেস হ্যাঁ রে বেটা আমার গ্রেস কুছ নেই হ্যাঁ ও বিশ্বনাথ জি কে গ্রেস হ্যাঁ ইট ইজ নট মাই গ্রেস ইট ইজ এ বিশ্বনাথ লজ শি ওয়াজ গ্রেস না ও বিশ্বনাথ দর্শন করতে যাবি তো না উইল গো টু সি বিশ্বনাথ ইয়েস মহারাজ গঙ্গা স্নান বি কোরেলিস ফার্স্ট বেদ ইন দি গ্যাঞ্জেস ফার্স্ট বেদ ইন দি গ্যাঞ্জেস দ্যাট স্টোরি টোল্ড মি অ্যান্ড দ্য স্টোরি টোল্ড দ্যাট লাটু মহারাজ ওয়াজ উইথ স্বামীজি ইন লাহোর ইন পঞ্জাব দে আর স্বামীজি গেভ এ ফেমাস লেকচার অন বেদান্ত সঞ্জয় স্বামীজি সেজ এই লেটো ইউ হ্যাভ টু গো উইথ মি ব্রাদার আই শ্যাল নট গো উইথ ইউ তুমি তো আংরেজিতে বলবে আমি তো আংরেজি জানে না ইউ উইল স্পিক ইন ইংলিশ আই ডো নট নো ইংলিশ নো 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 ইউ উইল হ্যাভ টু গো উইথ মি আর ইউ নট মাই ব্রাদার ও তো ঠিক বাত হয় দ্যাট ইজ অল রাইট আই এম ইউর ব্রাদার বাট নো নো ইউ উইল হ্যাভ টু গো উইথ মি দেন রাজু মহারাজ সিং ভাই আমারা তো সিল্ক অ্যান্ড ড্রেস তো নেই হ্যাঁ মানে আই ডো নট হ্যাভ সিল্ক গাউন আই ডো নট হ্যাভ গুড ড্রেস স্বামীজি ওয়েঞ্জ অ্যান্ড ব্রড হু ওয়ান অফ হিজ ড্রেস অ্যান্ড পুচ অ্যারাউন্ড হিম পুচ হিম বলে স্বামীজি তো আমার চেয়েও খুব লম্বা মানে স্বামীজি ওয়াজ টলার দেন মি দি ড্রেস ওয়েন ডাউন বিলো মাই ফিট দেন স্বামীজি লিফটেড মাই কোলাত আপ অ্যান্ড চায় জারাউন মাই ওয়েস্ট সো দ্যাট ইট ক্যান ফিট ইউ নো দেন সে ভাই আমার তো পুগড়ি নেই হাই আই ডো না যাব চার বেন সো স্বামীজি মেজে চা মেজে চার বেন অন মাই হেজ দেন again i want to shamiji i say shamiji i shall not go but why that we white english people white american english people will go with you i shall not go with you no 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 you will have to go with me <laughs> but by then i shall sit on the coachman on the top <laughs> in the horse carriage did you see coachman sits on the top <laughs> i shall sit on with the coachman <laughs> but no 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 you will have to sit with me So, Swamiji, he went. Then Swamiji gave a lecture in Lahore. Swamiji, the Vedanta Keshwari Chilean Janishto, Swamiji was a roaring lion of Vedanta. He was lecturing. And he was so fired. He, he hit on the, on the table and some flower vases fell down. <laughs> Then after the lecture, Swamiji, that lecture, I think, two, three hours lecture, long lecture, Vedanta, which is in complete was volume three. 
<laughs> then he's Shamaji came back. But he said, yeah, later, could you understand my lecture? Huh? I understood your lecture. <laughs> to me, you did not say anything new. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, what? Buddha, Shankara, Master said, you reiterated their words. You did not say. Shamaji said, you are the only person who has understood my lecture. <laughs> You did not say anything. <laughs> In this connection, I remember the story of Mark Twain. Mark Twain went to a church and listened to the sermon and told the pastor, the minister, you gave the sermon, but you did not say a single word original. Everything you borrowed. The minister became mad. What? I work hard and prepared this new sermon and you were criticizing me that I did not say anything new. But exactly. I can I can prove it. I shall send a book to you from where every word you have you you took everything from them, from that book. Next day, Mark Twain sent an unabridged. Webster Dictionary to the minister. <laughs> Whatever you said, every word is in that dictionary. <laughs> Funny. I still remember that story. <laughs> <laughs> then Swamiji made the rules in Belluma. That everybody will have to do exercise, dumbbell, barbell. That was going to be. Brother, in this old age, no more dumbbell barbell. I cannot do it. All right. Then Shamiji made a rule that every monk will have to get up at 4 o'clock after wash, come to the shrine and meditate. <laughs> Latumaras packed his clothes <laughs> and about to leave the monastery. <laughs> Where are you going? Brother. <laughs> You might have a wonderful mind that your mind will say, four o'clock, meditate. But my mind does not go that way. <laughs> I cannot follow the rules. That they mind you meditate at four o'clock. My mind does not go that way. All right, you leave. <laughs> then, when he was leaving, Shamaji called him back. Come back. Stay. This rule is not for you. How Swamiji flexed. That man is meeting you all the time. At four o'clock you will have to sit. You know, that is the beauty of the Ramakrishna order. Tremendous freedom. No regimentation. In the Catholic monastery, all these things are very regimented. Rule, rules. No. There are some exceptions are there. <laughs> this story I heard from Swami Dhirashanandaji. It is in the book. Latumaraj went to hear a lecture. To lecture him in a class on the Kato Upanishad. The last verse of the Kato Upanishad, Jama said, Ongusto Matra Purusha. A, the size of the Atman is less like a thumb, which is inside the heart of each human being. But those who are Nuara Brahman, they know how to separate that Atman from the body. Like a stalk from the blade of grass. I, I wrote down that Purusha or the Atman dwells in the hearts of human beings, let a man separate him from the body as one separates the tender stalk from a blade of grass. But you know, completely, you can you learn how to separate the Atman from the body. The Nwara Brahman knows it. Latumara is zero education, 
doesn't know Sanskrit at all. And that Ponjit is explaining the Sanskrit. And Swami Shuddhananda, Shudhir Maharaj was with him. Hey Shudhir, Ponjit thik bole chhe. Hey Shudhir, this Ponjit said the right thing. Again, Shudhir, Ponjit thik bole chhe. Again, Shudhir, Ponjit thik bole chhe. In the class he started to shout and tell the Shudhir. Shudhir Maharaj said, Maharaj, let us go now back. Came to the ashram, came to Balaram Mandir. At night time, time to time, he got up and said, Hey Shudhir, that Punjit said the right thing. He's comparing his own experience that how to separate the Atman from the body. Real me, this is the sign of a real mistake. Sometimes if people are depressed, I tell them, read the teachings of Latu Maharaj. That if Shahwe Shepard Bhai became a saint, read his teachings portion. Somebody came and said, I have lost, lost. Carry a picture of Sri Ramakrishna in your pocket. When lust comes, watch his eyes. His face, your last will disappear. A couple of things I shall tell about Raju Maharaj is the way he taught. Maharaj, how to serve God? Then he says, You know. There is a garden, a rich man has a garden, has an orchard. In that orchard, two gardeners. One gardener used to do his duties. Another gardener one day found a ripe papaya in the tree. He picked it up because otherwise the birds will peck and it will fall and it will be rotted. He was telling that when you are worshipping, you are worshipping God's thing you are giving to God. That he was telling. So, when the owner of the garden came during weekend, this gardener brought this papaya and gave to him. Master, this is a ripe papaya I got in the tree. Please take it. Now the owner of the garden knows this garden is mine, this papaya tree is mine, this papaya is my, belongs to me, and this servant is my paid servant. So he gave my papaya to me. No. No. There is something extra going with papaya. is thoughtfulness and love. That person is saying, I do not care, I get my entry salary, let the papaya be destroyed in the only tree. No. Your thoughtfulness and your love for the master, that is the most important thing in a spiritual life. And second story also, I sometimes it moves me. Some people say, Oh, so much responsibility, I feel so heavy. Family, especially the, those who are householders, wife, children, job, this, that. If you feel heaviness on your shoulder, Lahatu Maharaj told them, do you know what? If I ask you to carry two buckets of water and put it in the garden, you will say, oof, so heavy, so heavy, I cannot carry. So heavy, I cannot carry. But when you go to the swimming pool or a pond, you dive below, perhaps 100 buckets of water above your head, but you do not feel that heaviness. You do not feel that heaviness. 
hundred buckets of water on you above your head in your swimming pool or in the in the in the in the in the, in the pond. Similarly, he says, if you take God in your life and live in God consciousness, you will never feel that burden on your shoulder. Life will be very smooth. Maharaj, tell us, we have not seen God. You are asking that God is our God and, and, and uh, love God. I, we have never seen God. You are asking us to see God, love God. That Maharaj said. You want a job? Yes. What do you do? You write all our bio data, all of your experiences, everything you send to the owner of the company. And they have a personal, they will hire you, they will interview. Owner will not, you will not see the owner. His people will interview you, will find that you say, that I have these, 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 these qualifications, I have this experience, please hire me, I want to serve you. That is the way you get a job, correct? Please, yes. Similarly, write an application to Sri Ramakrishna or God, that these are the, my Jibu qualifications. I have devotion, I have love, I have faith, I have sincerity, I have purity, all these things. That is your qualifications. You write down and put it to God. Then you see, the moment you get a job, perhaps you do not know the owner. One day the owner will come to check. The manager will show the owner all departments, CEO. And then, sir, this is the accountant who is recently hired. He is a very good accountant we hired for our company. So the owner will see you and you will see the owner. But you got the you got to see the owner after you got the job. But before that you did not see the owner. Before job you, you only heard the own name of the owner. But you have never seen him. You know, the way he talks, this illiterate, you have a hundred percent illiterate, only Thakur says, Vedvedanta will burst forth from your lips. People marvel that why did you get such wisdom? Guru's grace. Sri Ramakrishna demonstrated, here is my disciple, no education, no other Brahman, a great teacher. We are really indebted to Chandrasekhar Chattopadhyay who recorded his reminiscences. A big volume. Marvelous book. Anyhow, I told you, oh my goodness, I passed more than an hour. Sri Ramakrishna told him, look, Leto, here God exists. Do not forget him. How can I forget someone who loves me so much? Sri Ramakrishna's love. Imagine a saint. Grace of Guru. Vasatoma Sadgamayo, Tamasoma Jyoti Gamayo, Mriturma Amritam Gamayo, Avira Bilma Yedi, Rudra Jatte Dakshina Mukam, Inapampa Hinitam, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to immortality, light us to and through, and guide us evermore with the loving presence. 
he's 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 been quite 